a Portland Community College Mathematics Telecourse. A course in arithmetic review at Portland Community College. Let's look at our English system once again. Just look at the number of units of measure we have in each kind of physical situation. In weights, we have pounds, ounces, tons, grains, and many others. In length, in inches, feet, yards, miles, league, rod, chain, and again, many, many more. In volume, we have pint, quart, gallon, ounce, peck, cup, teaspoon, tablespoon, and it goes on and on. That's because over a long course of history, England was occupied and occupied itself many countries and there was much borrowing going on between many countries. Pretty soon we adopted so many of these units that the scientists themselves decided that we had to reduce these somehow. So at a conference a century, several centuries ago, it was agreed to redo these into easier and fewer units of measure. And the name of that system is the metric system, metric to mean measure. In this system, for length, there is only one length measurement, and that's a meter. By the way, that's about 39 inches long. And for weight, there is only one unit to weigh with, and that's gram. And the gram is about the weight of a standard paper clip, a very small unit of weight. And vo volume, one unit of volume, liter. A liter is a little bit more than a quart. Now, we won't go into here why they selected these particular amounts for each one of these. That's related to the physical properties of water and the earth, by the way. But can you see that just three units is a lot nicer than those, which is only a partial list of hours. Once you get used to working in the metric system, it's a nice system because it works just like our money system or our base 10 number system. Now to get larger or smaller units, rather than going to different units as the English system does, foot to yards to mile, the metric system simply uses powers of 10 very much like the American money system. See, we have a cent, which is a hundredth of a dollar, a dime, which is a tenth of a dollar, then a dollar, then ten of those dollars, a hundred dollar bill, a thousand dollar bills. Now, it's true, it's not quite that perfect, because we do have in-between units. Five hundred dollars, fifty dollars, twenty dollars, five dollars, etc. But basically, it's a simple system. It's a base ten system. Now, in the metric system, we'll use word prefixes to represent the powers of 10. Latin word prefixes, because at the time this was adopted, Latin was the universal language of Europe. There are quite a few of them, but there's only six really basic ones that you should memorize as soon as possible. The word 10 in the metric system is deca, and it's abbreviated DA, and they don't use a period. The hundred is the word hecto, is abbreviated H. Thousand is kilo, abbreviated K. The word kilo, the American public is fairly familiar with. As examples, let's see different ways of saying these three units of measures. Ten meters, numeral ten, the abbreviation for meters is simply M with no period. But instead of saying ten meters, I could say one deca meter because the metric prefix deca simply means 10. So one deca is DA, meter is M. Now if I want to say 100 liters, the abbreviation for liter is simply L. But instead of saying 100 liters, I could say 1 hectoliter. Hecto means 100. 
1, the abbreviation for hecto is H, liter is still L. A thousand grams, which is a little bit more than two pounds, would be 1,000. The abbreviation for grams is G. But instead of saying a thousand grams, I could say one kilogram. Kilo is metric for a thousand. One, abbreviation of kilo is K, gram is G. And of course, I could apply the kilo not only to the gram, but to the liter or to the meter. So these prefixes are used on all units of measure, unlike the English. A much simpler system once you're used to it. Now the three basic metric prefixes which make smaller. A tenth is the word dece, abbreviated just D. Hundredth is the word cente, abbreviated C. Thousandth is the word mille, or prefix, abbreviated M. Some examples. Let's say we have these different fractions of a volume unit, the liter. A thousandth of a liter, a hundredth of a liter, a tenth of a liter. Instead of saying a tenth of a liter, we could simply say I have one deciliter. The prefix deci means tenth, and of course that's our decimal system, and we use the word deci many, many times in our daily lives. So we have one, the prefix for, the abbreviation for deci is D liter. Okay, a hundredth of a liter, we could simply say one centi liter. The prefix centi means hundredth. And of course we have that in our everyday language too. The cent, a hundredth of a dollar. So one, abbreviation for centi is C, liter is L. Okay, instead of a thousandth of a liter, we could say one milliliter. Milli means thousandth. One, abbreviation for milli, is M, liter is L. And I could have used deci with meter and get decimeter, centi with meter and get centimeter, milli with meter and get millimeter. I could use deci with grams and get decigrams. A hundredth of a gram would be a centigram. A thousandth of a gram would be a milligram. If it seems complicated to you at first, it's simply because it's new and I'm going very fast. Once you're used to it, it really is a very simple system. Furthermore, the metric system is the official measurement system of all sciences and of most of the world's economies. Just remember, not only does the metric system work like our money system, but like our base 10 or powers of 10 system, which means we can move decimal points rather than converting units, which we have to in the English system. See our number system, we have a basic unit, which of course in the number system is one, one of something. We have 10 of it, that's deca. 100 of it, hecto, 1,000 kilo. A tenth of it, deci. 100th of it, centi. Thousandth of it, mille. So it works exactly like the number system if you get used to it. On our last unit, remember how difficult it was to add different units? You had to convert them all. But in the metric system, it's just this easy. This is 35 milliliter, which is 35 thousandths of a liter. Okay, this is 7 deciliter, which is 7 tenths of a liter. And here we just have 2 liters. Adding those, I get 2.735 liters is a sum of these. So once you get used to the metric system, everything is in tenths or tens and decimal points. Very easy. 
Same thing with subtraction. 12 grams, subtract 8 centigrams. The centi means hundredths, so 8 hundredths of a gram. And it's simply a matter of using a decimal system. So my answer is 11.92 grams. This makes it very convenient to work units on calculators, computers, and many other applications. Get used to the system. Most people don't realize that the U.S. government is indeed officially on the metric system, and most machine parts and car parts are metric already. In fact, as it turns out, in the metric system, there is far, far less to remember than in any other system of measurement. So to understand the metric system itself, there are three basic units for the average person to remember. There are more than that for the scientist, but for the average person, you simply have to remember that the basic unit of length is meter, abbreviated M, and at the beginning it might help you to remember that that's about 39 inches if you're still thinking in the English system. And after length, the basic unit of volume is liter, abbreviated L, and to help to have a feel for this, you might recall that one liter is a trifle more than one quart. In fact, about a third of a cup more. And after volume, the average person next would work with weight. And in the metric system, that is one gram, which is abbreviated G. In some of the older books, GM, but that's going out in favor of just G. And it might help you to recall that a gram is the weight of a standard paper clip. So we only have three basic units. Their basic unit of time, by the way, is still the second. And the basic unit of temperature is Celsius, which most of us are getting used to through our daily news. And we won't worry about just this moment. So these are the three main new units of measure that one has to learn. But just one for each of these, whereas in English there, are, there is a multiplicity of measurements units for each one of these, length, volume, and weight. Now to get more of one meter or less of one meter, we need to memorize this following short table. So to get larger, than the standard unit, you just think in units of 10. Either I'll have 10 of them, I'll have 100 of them, or I'll have 1,000 of them. And there are many, many more, but the average person does not encounter those. So if you can remember the prefix for each of these, you're in good shape. And more important, the prefix letter. So des the 10 has the prefix DA, and the word for that is deca. And if you have 100 of something, the prefix for that is H, and the word name for that is hecto. And of course, you probably know this. If I have 1,000 of something, I have a kilo, and the prefix for that is K. This is the most important for working mathematically and this for speaking. Now, if you remember these three units of powers of 10 in metric words and metric prefixes, working with metrics is quite simple. And of course, we not only want to get larger than the basic unit, sometimes we want to smaller. And to get smaller than the standard unit, you again get smaller by units of 10. Either you have a tenth of a basic unit, or a hundredth of a basic unit, or a thousandth of a basic unit. And of course, there are many for smaller than this. And if you're curious, you might look them up in a dictionary. But these three are those I use the most. So tenth, 
the prefix is D, and the word name for that is Desi, and the prefix for a hundredth is C, and of course most people know that one, that's Sente, and the prefix for a thousand is M, and the word name for that is Mille. Now these things we've just shown you, the smaller prefixes, the larger than prefix, and of course the names of the three basic units of measure, you must memorize. You will not feel comfortable with these until you do. They're really quite simple. Most of us feel comfortable between feet and yards because we know there are three feet in one yard. But we're not comfortable between pecks and bushes, bushels, because we don't have that memorized. So these are not hard. If you're uncomfortable with them, it's simply that these are on paper in front of you and are not yet in your mind. As soon as they're memorized, it will be very comfortable. Let me show you. A few moments ago, we wanted to add these three units of length, but from the previous lesson, we already know that I can't do it unless all the units are exactly the same. Well, if we knew nothing more than that, that L there is my basic unit of measure. So this says I have two of them. And these two tell me either I have more than or less than it. And this tells me how many more than or how many less than. So L is liter, a unit of volume. And if we merely have this memorized with respect to these prefixes, I could very easily do this. See here, I have ML, and M means .001. In short, when I see that prefix M, if I wish, I can erase it and replace it by this, because this is what this means. So I have 35.001, replacing the M. Now it's all liters. And over here I have seven, but the prefix D is just another way of saying tenth liter and two liter. Now doing the arithmetic implied by this, this gives me point zero zero zero. 3.5 liter, this gives me 0.7 liter, and here I have 2 liter. Now that the units are all the same, I have, in effect, permission to add, and just adding pure decimals, and I have this many liters as being the sum of these. So see, it's very, very easy. The prefixes themselves, once you have memorized their relationships to the powers of 10, are telling you exactly what to do in each case. And now once we're done, we simply work in the decimals rather than the strange fractional units we had in the English system. And of course, once you really really have these memorized, you won't even do it this way. You'll do it as we did it a few moments ago. You will simply know that milli means thousandth, so this really says I have 35 thousandths of a liter. And you write it accordingly. And you'll read this perhaps, seven deci liters, but you will know that deci means tenth, so this is saying seven tenths of a liter, and you'll simply say so. And of course, you have two liters here. So you not only learn to say milli deci, but you will think simultaneously thousandth, tenth, etc. But until you have it memorized so you can work that comfortably, and you should before too long, you can at least memorize this, and wherever you have a prefix, Replace that prefix by this, and then go ahead and do the implied arithmetic. 
And this is a technique that will make it very easy to go from the multiple units into just the basic unit. So let's summarize that. In order to translate into a basic metric unit, you simply replace its prefix by its number value. Here are the prefixes. Here are the number values. Doing just one more problem to drive that fact home. Let's say you have this metric measure. This end letter tells you what you have to begin with. G is grams, so you have a unit of weight. And this tells you what size of unit weight, and this tells you how many of those you have. And you should realize by now that H stands for hecto, and hecto means 100. So if nothing else, I can replace the H by 100 grams, and then simply do the implied arithmetic, which gives me 35 grams. So 0.35 hectogram is simply 35 grams. Isn't that remarkably simple? And all you have to have, have memorized is these six facts and the three basic units. Nine extraordinary simple memorizations will work the whole system for us. And to go from a basic unit into a multiple unit, the technique is essentially the same, except now we ask, what is the relationship of this? So one of these, one dm, is how many m's? Well, first we recall that m is a unit of measure, so that's the meter, so we're talking about lengths here. And this is deci, so one decimeter means, deci means one tenth of a meter. So read this equal, if you would, as means. So one decimeter means one tenth of a meter. See, deci has been replaced by a tenth. Now, but I want to replace just one of these m's here, if you would, and I have a tenth of an m here. But if I were to multiply this side by 10, 10 times 1 tenth is 1 meter. But then using what we've learned so far in our pre-algebra, I have to multiply this side by 10 too. And I get that 1 meter is 10 decimeters. So now up here, if I wish, I can replace meter by 10 decimeters then do the implied arithmetic. So 10 times that is 45, and of course, decimeters. So 4.5 meters is 45 decimeters. And of course, this is quite reasonable, isn't it? Because if there are 10 decimeters per every liter, then I have 10 times as many here. If, on the other hand, I wanted to go from the basic to a larger rather than a smaller, again, the tactic is the same. We ask one hectometer means what? Well, hecto means 100 of the basic units meter. But I want to replace one meter, and I have 100 here. So if I were to divide this side by 100, divide this side by 100, I have here just one meter. So this one meter will replace this one meter, and I get 4.5, and the meter gets replaced by hectometer divided by 100. And again, carrying out the implied arithmetic, 4.5 divided by 100 is 0 0.045, of course, hectometer. Do you see that? Very, very simple. If it seems the least bit complicated, it's simply because it's so very new to you. But in time, you'll learn it's far, far simpler 
than the English system that we've grown up with. What happens if we want to go from one non-basic unit to another non-basic unit? Now you might ask, how did I know they're non-basic units? Because there are two letters here. And to find out what the basic unit is, see how very, very simple it is? Just look at the N letter and know that G means gram. Gram is a unit of weight, so we're talking about so many weights here. So we want to go from a hectogram into a milligram. And to do that, we simply put all that we've learned together. We have here a number, 0.00457. And so we simply have to know that H now means 100. So we replace the H by 100. And that gives us gram. Now, we can go ahead and multiply this out. But then our next step is, how do we get from grams to milligrams? So we ask ourselves, what's the relationship between milligram and gram? So we recall that one milligram is milli means a thousandth, so that's one thousandth of a gram. And of course, we want one gram here. So if I were to multiply this by a thousand, I would have to multiply this by a thousand. And that says wherever I have a G, I can replace it by this. Well, I have a G. So I'm going to replace it by 1,000 milligram, which unit-wise is what I want. Now I just follow through on my arithmetic. To multiply by this 100, I make larger by two places. Then to multiply by another 1,000, I'll make larger by another three places. So I end with 45.7 mg, so 0 0.000457 hectogram is 45.7 milligram. Once again, once you become very, very experienced, you won't do it this way. This is just a manner that you use to keep your thoughts straight until this is memorized and you worked with the system a great number of times. In practice, you will know just from familiarity with the series whether I'm making this larger or smaller by the relationship of these two units. And that basically is the way that you will do it in science classes. But until then, use this technique to build a bridge from the beginning to experience. This is your host, Bob Fennell. We'll see you at the next lesson.